Today we'll be talking about uh, how we can track uh, SharePoint usage using uh, Google Analytics. Uh, obviously, you get some analytics with the um, um, SharePoint uh, in terms of uh, page um, page views, very, very limited analytics. But if you want to take it to the next level and uh, uh, leverage Google Analytics uh, within Share your uh, SharePoint uh, uh, tenant, you can you can use SPFX. And today the demo will be around um, creating SPFX solution, uh, which is an application customizer. Uh, the role of this SPFX solution is to inject the Google Analytics code in your uh, in your tenant. So it can be either to specific site or all the SharePoint sites. Um, so um, I'm uh, yeah. My name is Samir Dawdi. I'm Power Platform uh, Architect. I've been working with SharePoint for a long time. Before that, I was a more pro developer, uh, .NET developer, and um, yeah, I spent. Um, most of my time working with Microsoft technology. So um, I try to blog uh, regularly. So you can hit me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or follow me on my blog. Um, there is also a blog post about what we will, uh, we will see today. Uh, so if I'm going uh, too fast, you can go back to, to my blog and uh, review the steps. Um, so in terms of the agenda or the, the steps uh, for today, uh, we will first create Google Analytics property uh, to track uh, the usage of our SharePoint sites. Next, we will uh, use Yeoman Generator to scaffold an SPFX uh, solution. Uh, we will override the on init pro uh, function of our SPFX uh, solution, our application uh, customizer. So it's going to be an extension uh, where we will just uh, inject some some uh, code in the on init, and uh, we'll bundle ship the SPFX solution and add it to the SharePoint app catalog. Um, right. So. I'm going to switch to my VM to do that. Uh, first, we're going to create uh, a folder for our solution. So let's call this uh, SP Google Analytics. I will call Yeoman Generator to do that. In terms of templates, I have only the SharePoint template, which is more than enough for today. Um, the solution name can go with uh, SP Google Analytics. It is an extension, not a web part, so the users won't see anything. Uh, and uh, the uh, the type of the client side extension is an application customizer. You can give it a more uh, user friendly name. Timer, and we can wait for um, Yeoman Generator to discover the solution. While it's doing that, I will switch uh, to Google Analytics just to create the property. So here I'm in my Google Analytics dashboard, and uh, you can have different accounts, different properties. Um, so for today's demo, I'm going to create a new property, and let's call this, um, I don't know, demo, SPE, Google Analytics. We'll give it some information here. So need these, but uh, they are mandatory. So we have to, to go by the. So let's say the business side is small. And the, the target is get baseline reports. OK. Now we created our property and we have uh, three different types of collecting data. You can have uh, you can use the, the web platform, uh, Android app or an iOS app. Obviously, we we'll go with web platform for SharePoint usage. Uh, it asks you for a website. This will be our uh, SharePoint tenant. OK, and the three name, this is just the um, an internal name just to uh, identify the property you are looking at. So we call this demo SP Google Analytics. OK, create stream. Basically, this is all we need from Google Analytics side. There is no additional uh, configuration or endpoints or anything like that. And uh, to be more precise, the uh, only information we need is the measurement ID, uh, previously called tracking ID. So we're going to leave it as it is. Let's switch back to uh, our VM and see how are we doing here. This may take uh, a couple of minutes, so I will see if I can show you. Um, um, I think I had. Sorry, I think I had uh, another place where I've added all the. Um, so I created a solution before this because the, the scaffolding may take a long time and uh, it is the SPJ demo. Um, I've not done anything with that. It's. Uh, this one. All right, so 
It's exactly the same, uh, just to avoid waiting uh, forever for the scaffolding to finish. So we will open this in VS Code. Um, I assume you already have uh, a SharePoint framework development environment. If not, there are plenty of uh, articles about that. You will find uh, one in learnt of Microsoft.com with all the prerequisite um, uh, Node.js, Gulp, uh, Yeoman, the different generators. Uh, but um, I hope you have a VM where you can play with, with it. So now I will open this uh, project in, in VS Code or your preferred uh, code editor. The structure of uh, Sorry. We don't need this. So uh, the structure of our code, uh, I think you most of you are familiar with uh, with uh, the structure. Basically, you have the source. You, have, you can have different extensions here. We look at um, the extension here, but if you have read, readme file, you have some uh, manifest or JSON file where you can change the description, the name of your extension. Um, if you look at the uh, the uh, the extension itself uh, basically we have this on init uh, property and this is what runs when the um, the uh, the application is enabled in our tenant uh, our work will, will be around this property uh, this uh, this function here sorry um, just to avoid wasting your time I'm going to go back to my uh, my blog and um, if you look here the idea is um, uh, we're gonna ha we're gonna store the tracking ID in a, in um, in a variable uh, in our code. And uh, if you have used Google Analytics in the past, you may be familiar with uh, with this part. But basically, we we create an element of type uh, JavaScript. Uh, the the source of this script is coming from Google Tag Manager, and we will append this um, after that. So just before uh, the the body section of the document, um, I will copy everything. Let's switch back to our code here, and. To paste this, this part. Uh, obviously, all we need to change here is the tracking ID. I will switch back to my measurement ID or tracking ID. We can copy this value, and this is why it identifies the property that we have just created. Um, because we have removed the predefined on init second, so there are a couple of things that we may not need here. Um, I'm going to comment them for now. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's all we need to do. You can change the description, uh, change some details about your application customizer, but uh, for the time being, that's more than enough. I will switch back to uh, my terminal, and here we will do go bundle and prepare it for shipping. Basically, this is the equivalent of saying compile my solution. It may take a couple of seconds to do that. All right, so once uh, it's done, we can uh, package the solution. So we're going to say go package solution and pass the, the adoption uh, shape. So basically, this will create a, a .sp package file uh, within SharePoint folder, and that's what we need to, uh, to upload to our um, uh, SharePoint tenant. So to do that, we need to go to SharePoint Admin Center and we uh, navigate to the App Catalog. So from the, um, the SharePoint Admin Center, you go to More Features and you have the App Catalog here. I don't think I have anything in this tenant. Um, let's let's have a look. Yeah, just the Microsoft Learning Pathway. So uh, what? you can do from here um, you can just let me reveal this this file hello I think I basically what we need to do here is to uh, drag and drop the um, um, the SP package file into our uh, app catalog in the SharePoint tenant all right so uh, once we do that, we have the option of say, enable this uh, custom application on all our sites 
uh, I mean, across the tenant, or you can just enable this application and you will have to go to the different um, different sites and add the application individually. It's up to you. So for today's demo, I'm going to say enable this app across my tenant. So any site, any traffic, any um, any details about the SharePoint usage will be captured by Google Analytics within that within that tenant. So I will enable the app. All right, so my app has been enabled. As you can see, uh, SPJ demo client site solution enabled and it's added to all, all sites. Perfect. Uh, now, uh, I think I have a demo site. So if, uh, if I switch back to uh, Google Analytics, and uh, I will look at my property. OK, that's fine. It just says sometimes it takes uh, 48 hours to uh, for uh, the property to start capturing information. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we can we can start looking at this. So I can go to the different reports. You can look at the report snapshot if you want to, to see historical data or you can look at the real time uh, real time data. Now I will. And um, start navigating in my SharePoint uh, site just as um as i would expect any users to do um i will open a couple of pages let's say customization instruction a week in life and here you go so at the moment in real time you have one user uh, who's in edinburgh it revealed my location and these are the page we are navigating to uh, different events have been captured like page view first visit scroll and so on um, obviously you can customize your your uh, report in uh, in google analytics or uh, you can pull this data back into power bi and combine it with other uh, information and other systems and use this data as you want but uh, um, so far that's it um, under 10 minutes we created the application created the property injected the application in the app catalog and we started to get some feed in google analytics from sharepoint that's it for me over to you gary